You wouldn't have thought it, but this little twerp changed special effects forever. In my last video, I talked about how Weta Digital changed special effects forever with a graphics program that came to be known as Massive, which is responsible for portraying large-scale battle scenes. Well, as it turns out, that wasn't the only CGI technique used in Lord of the Rings that was adopted by the movie industry. Motion capture is the technique used to take an actor's movements and facial expressions and superimpose them onto a computer animated character. Now, the way technology goes, it develops over time. One could argue that motion capture started as early as the 1930s, when animators for Snow White would base their drawings directly from the movements of actors. But where do you draw the line? When do you say, this is when motion capture started for real? When did the technology hit critical mass so much so that it became a thing that was used in other movies? Well, the answer is in 2001 with The Fellowship of the Ring, when we first get a glimpse of Gollum. While motion capture for body movements was already established, The Lord of the Rings used a new system for capturing facial expressions. Special cameras recorded Andy Serkis's face as he performed, which allowed the animators to replicate his emotional range on Gollum's digital face. So they were able to use all of Serkis's expressions to bring Gollum to life. So let's talk about about Andy Serkis. One of the best decisions with the use of motion capture in The Lord of the Rings was the choice of actors. Andy Serkis, a British actor trained in theater acting, was told that there was a role for Gollum up for grabs. The role was described to Serkis as a voiceover for a digital character. This raised some concerns for Serkis because he did not consider himself to be a voice actor. Fortunately, there was much more to the role than performing a voiceover. Serkis took extensive measures to embody Gollum physically. He would often move on all fours to achieve the hunched, agile stance of Gollum, and he meticulously worked on his vocal delivery to create the unique sounds that Gollum makes. There's a funny story that Circus has shared about how he developed the voice for Gollum. Circus explains that it was Tolkien who wrote that Gollum was called Gollum because of a certain sound he made. While brainstorming how best to achieve this, Circus's cat walked into the room he was sitting in and coughed up a hairball right in front of him. Pretty gross, but the sounds the cat was making set off a light bulb in Circus's head and voila, Gollum's signature sound was born. Circus's work on Lord of the Rings sparked a debate on the legitimacy of motion capture acting. Despite the groundbreaking nature of Circus's performance, he was not nominated for an Academy Award. Many believe this was due to the fact that motion capture acting wasn't fully recognized at the time. In retrospect, this has been widely seen as a missed opportunity to honor a truly immersive performance. Gollum is a really interesting character because he is a rare example of a villain who evokes both both loathing and sympathy. Though he is often deceitful, treacherous, and driven by a dark desire for the ring, he also shows moments of vulnerability and even kindness. On one hand, he absolutely cannot be trusted. His mind has been too corrupted by the power of the ring. But on the other hand, you see moments where you genuinely feel sorry for him. Moments where Gollum is actually helpful and you find yourself torn whether you want to drop kick him off Mount Doom or befriend him. In the end, Gollum is a fascinating character brought to life by the highly expressive acting of Andy Serkis and Weta Digital. What do you think Tolkien would say if he saw the Lord of the Rings movies today? Do you think he would be impressed with the interpretations of his books? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.